Hi, Greg Ellis from the Illawarra Mercury and today on The People of Wollongong we're talking to Professor Julie Steele from the University of Wollongong. This segment is brought to you by Access Law Group and the Illawarra Mercury. Julie, welcome along today. Hi, Greg. Now, uh, I've known you for probably 15 to 20 years. I've been talking to you and doing interviews with you and we've talked and discussed some very interesting things in that time and you're globally recognised for what you do, being the first Australian president of the, I've got to get this right, Biomechanics... It's the International Society of Biomechanics. There we so, go. Yes, I was the first International um, of Society of Biomechanics president, which is the biggest society in the world on musculoskeletal biomechanics. I currently sit on the World Council of Biomechanics, and that is 44 people chosen from around the world in the most diverse application of biomechanics. So we're talking about cellular biomechanics, cardiac biomechanics. So I'm very, very much of what they call applied biomechanics, using this physics to understand how the body works. And your whole career then has pretty much been here in Wollongong. I've actually, yes, yeah, so I came in 1983. Um, I was trained originally as a physical education teacher. Um, at that stage, there were very few universities that actually offered an exercise science program. It was called Human Movement then. And so I came to Wollongong on a one-year contract. I did not think I would stay for more than one year. In fact, most of my friends in Sydney were kept saying, oh, you poor thing, you know, Wollongong, because it didn't have a great reputation. But I absolutely fell in love with the region and also the university. It was small enough to be personal, but big enough to really have things happening. And I've always sworn that I'll leave when I got bored. And this is my 35th year and I'm still waiting to get bored. But what I do now is I am the director of what they call the Biomechanics Research Laboratory. It's a small but very focused productive group that's at the University of Wollongong. I set up in 2006 um, Breast Research Australia, BRA, to really provide a home for the unique research we were doing at the time, which was on breast health biomechanics. And most people at that time thought we weren't really being serious. They would come sit down and go, really, is this an issue? This is a major area of health concern for women. And that if we're going to allow all women, irrespective of breast size, to be active, we need to focus our research in that area. So it's, again, it's within the Biomechanics Research Lab. This is all based at Wollongong, um, but it has a worldwide reputation because of the unique work we do. But when I first interviewed you, you were doing work with paratroopers and um, you're doing work on footwear and things like that. The bras have been a factor all along, but uh, can you just tell me a little bit about the sequence of how things sure. happen? So my original research way back in the 80s was very much on what we call lower limb biomechanics, looking at loading, the forces applied to that limb and how can we either prevent injuries or enhance performance. So this is where the military work came in. And if you think about it, the loads that paratroopers experience um, when they land are horrendous. So we went down to Nowra and over that year they had six various courses and we would run around the drop zone with video cameras filming the paratroopers landing and then trying to work out the technique they used to land and was that associated with injury. And uh, the work you've been doing more recently, I understand, is to design a bra that can adjust for whatever you're doing at the time, whether that be walking or running or playing sport, or is that a fair summation of the bionic bra? Well, I smile because we've actually been working in that area now for nearly two decades. And when I do talk, I mean, wearable technologies is the buzzword now. We started two decades ago exactly that, trying to look at could I somehow merge our biomechanics knowledge with Professor Gordon Wallace's amazing uh, innovative materials to come up with what we call responsive garments. A big problem with sports bras is they're quite tight, they can be uncomfortable. So could I have a bra that while I'm sitting here, I'm lovely and relaxed, all of a sudden I need to run somewhere, I need to catch a bus, someone calls me, I need to run. This bra could detect the amount of your breast movement and how quickly they move and then tighten up in response to when you need it. And again, when you sit down in the bath and you relax, it could, so it's the idea of a responsive garment that really caters for your needs. And just in wrapping up, uh, you provide a lot of opportunities for uh, young people, researchers and that coming through as well. So, and and, and, and to finishing this interview, I just want you to talk about that and also what the future holds for sure. Professor Julie Steele. Look, I suppose I've been blessed that I've had a long career. 
I've been a researcher, I've, been an, um, I've gone and, and been an administrator, I've been a head of school, I've been an associate dean researcher. I decided to step back into my traditional role of more the coalface academic because I think one of the biggest joys I get at that university is watching these undergraduate students who then step into a postgraduate or researcher role. So watching what these students can achieve both from an academic point of view, from a research point of view, from a translation into the community. And all these people are working on devices that we hope can enhance the quality of life. Um, and what else could you ask for? So what do I see? Um, it's an interesting question because as I said, I have been at the university for so long. I said I'd leave when I got bored. I can't see that happening in a hurry. Um, I'm trying to take a little bit more time out rather than being a, you know, most academics work far too hard. Um, I've taken up long distance running, did my first marathon last year. And that in itself is quite you a your own bra for that? Interestingly, yeah. what I find is by now immersing myself in these are ultra marathons, you actually can pick up on some of the issues um, personally. Well, I'm glad you're not bored because um, <laughs> there's some great things happening in Wollongong that you're involved with and you're inspiring a lot of young researchers to come up through the ranks and you're inspiring other women and you're putting uh, Wollongong on the map globally. So uh, thank you very much for what you're doing and Professor Julie Steele, thank you for your time this morning. And thank you, Greg, for your support. And again, I think that's one of the most key important things is to, is to allow this idea of what we do at the university to be exposed. So thank you. Thank you very much. In the Loop Wollongong is possible because of the support of our wonderful partners, including our media partner, I98 FM. Good at playing golf. Yeah, by the looks of it, <laughs> made possible by partners. Wollongong Central, discover the city. The University of Wollongong, great place to learn. Sure is. Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Destination Wollongong, those people do so much for us. So much. Access Law Group, resolution is our solution. Kazen Business and Financial. Lancaster Law and Mediation. Illawarra Mercury. Internetrics. Relativity. This place right here with all this cool stuff. Woo! Our promotional partners who you can see here. And our kitchen partners. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on In The Loop Wollongong. Bye.